Welcome back to Limbus Company, Daily Mirror Dungeon. Looks like they've changed the title screen back to the Season 3 one. How fancy? Makes sense when the Christmas event is basically over now. But, um, yeah, starting on the title screen because, um, it is a new update. Notably, we have new IDs. It's been a while since I've actually included this as part of Daily Mirror Dungeon because I've live-streamed recent banners. Yeah, Target Dragon Sinclair, DHE. 300 Lunacy, that'll be nice module all that sort of stuff but yeah new identities pretty cool stuff give me my minimal amount of threads because i pulled a lot of the wall purchase banner but uh didn't end up mattering yeah we'll just get straight into it with the actual pulls though got a good amount of paid lunacy i'm gonna have to do a 10 pull with paid lunacy which does hurt a little bit but it's worth it so i can hopefully get the, the yisung yeah that's the non-important dailies first it's very possible i do get super lucky here oh two star how funny would it be? It's Sinclair Target Dragon, so it's probably going to be Sinclair, but what if it was Yisung? Mariachi. I actually might use that guy today. We'll have to see, depending on how, how I want to build the sinking team with these new units. Luckily, we don't get anything from the daily pull, which makes perfect sense. So let's just do a single 10 pull and hopefully get Yisung. Yeah, I don't like tapping into the paid lunacy, but I'd really like to just get the units, so... Hopefully we get at least decently lucky. Okay, there's five two-stars. We definitely get the two-star here. There we go. I'm Yisang. Please remain silent. Did you find yourself at the Temple of Knowledge? Very cool stuff. You can see, you know, he's got the book slash the dagger that he, like, always has on him in, like, all IDs and stuff. And there's also the weird person that was also in DHE Rodeon's, uh, CG there. There you go, just claim everything else. Probably a decent bit of Yisong shards, if I had to hope. Only, actually, from those five, we only got a single DHE Yisong. Although we did get a decent, decent bit of uh, Yisong shards either way, thanks to that. That's cool, though. I'll be doing it on that front, because I will just shard you. How many Honglu shards do I have? Already a fair bit. Yeah, I think I already did, like, some in, like, preparation. We'll do, like... Uh, how many Yu shards is Hong Lu at? We're gonna need him to have a little more than that, so you know, just pop, you know, 30 more boxes on him, because we're gonna get them to, up to hide a decent bit. And Yi Song is also gonna need. Actually, he's fine. Um, yeah. Starting off, of course, we gotta take a look at the the new phrases we have. Oh right, I need to actually. <laughs> I can believe for I need to actually get the new ID. Right, right. Standard there. J J Hong Lu. Oh, so that's how it's written. Fancy stuff, that little key that has, you know, the ability to magnify the words, it seems, make it gain more knowledge from something. We'll probably learn what the key does exactly from the update, because, you know, it grows and shrinks and stuff, but it seems like it does more reason than that. Looking for a blank, as I have read my blank. And key books. Ooh, books. That's funny, because, like, library joke. Oh, there we go. Hi, you'll make a fine books. Perfect. Library of Ruin a moment. But yeah. New ideas time. Um, DHE Yisung. DHE Hong Lu. More DHE stuff. Both these people are up to um, eight ideas now. That's pretty nice. Oh, everyone has at least seven already, so it makes enough sense, except for you with your six. But that's fine. You'll get an identity sooner or later, I'm sure. Probably she's she's definitely getting something with the actual Blade Lineage event, I feel like. But yeah, starting with DHE Yisung. Um, we'll level you up. I don't have a lot of training tickets, do I? I do not. Hmm. Might need to do a couple, like, skips there. I'll try and make sure I do that. Um, yeah, let's get you, let's get you uptied first and foremost. Not a lot of thread, oof. Yeah, I'm gonna need to thread a bunch of shards, seems. Is that so? Then it must not grow complacent with my studies. I shall persevere. Alright, let's see what you have to say. We still don't know too much about DHE, so I'm sure we're gonna get some random insights here and there. Get it? Insight. It is paramount in the mastery of the fist that I remain fully aware of the structure of the human anatomy. Sparring, basic cardiovascular fitness training, striking at punching bags, the ways of improving one's body are truly numerous. However, one must spend a significant amount of time before a desk, pen in hand, the truly gas grasp of constitutes the mastery of the fist. Have you ever experienced fatigue so extreme that each step feels as though you are wading through a quagmire? Yet in that exhaustion, my mind is cleared like the reflective surface of a freshly minted coin. 
I grow rather joyous on such occasions. To gaze upon the blueprint of a human body in solitude is to train my brain as one does body, to fortify the threads of my mind as one does the threads of musculature. I imagine the human anatomy in equivalence to an architecture. Like the average, like, Yi Song al story. It's, I mean, not average, but you know, some of them, like, warp comes to mind. What's he talking about? In the Association Library's Knowledge resp resp Repository, those countless bundles of paper, I found most interesting the subject of architecture. Considering that the young child, lifted from a terrible fate by the Association, found the section under Architecture and Human Anatomy most interesting as he perused from A row to H row at the library, it would be no hyperbole to say that these two subjects have much in common. Yeah, makes sense. Similar to architecture, you know, you gotta be careful about, you know, you gotta hit those certain weak points and everything comes falling apart. Architecture is all about, you know, preventing that, while punching you that is about trying to destroy that kind of balance. Sheer wall structure, trusses design, flat slab construction. I soon came to understand that, as I took notes on these words too electrifyingly to even vocalize, each and every one of these techniques was an outcome of an extended meditation on the pursuit of utmost stability. However, after a long contemplation of such designs, I have also come to understand that even the most robust of architectures have load-bearing walls that will crumble the entire construction, should they be properly damaged. I find the study of such vulnerabilities quite intriguing. If one were to ask me why ever, then I may answer that such study permits one to demolish and reconstruct effective construction with a newly invented structure closer to perfection, to tear down the architecture with ease once its flaws have been identified and eliminated. Such ideation came to me in the wake of my adulthood, as I began undertaking tasks for the association. It was around that time when I reached the H section of the library. I began to muse that perhaps flawed structures are ambling about in the name of human anatomy. I had a sudden thought that I wished to correct these flaws, not only by the association's orders, but compelled by nature as a researcher. <laughs> that's some, that's an interesting way to go about doing it, you know? I, you know, my research made me realize that, you know, people were flawed, so I decided I need to kill people with the, the, these flaws. Indeed, the human anatomy, though it may initially appear rather consistent across every individual, transfigurates into different structures as the body grows. Certain structures grow to be increasingly unstable in their physical blueprints, yet are reinforced by the cement and steel frame of a powerful mind that allows them to stand steadfast. Whereas certain other structures have firm physical balance, yet have built themselves an incredibly flawed internal design. The more flawed a structure is, the more obvious their vulnerabilities become. With my research, I may demolish them with a mighty and precise strike so that they may be rebuilt to a proper shape. Thus completed is the mastery of the fist. The mastery of an art that, instead of the polymorphous fickleness of the keys that unnecessarily destroys the outer layer, strikes at the core of the structure. Okay. Makes me wonder, are the actual DHEs, are the fists and keys kind of at odds with each other? This seems to be like kind of like attacking like the keys a little bit. Keys are necessarily just really out of the... Yeah, interesting. It's hard to say, it might just be, it might not be, you know, an actual like outward quarrel, but uh, each person thinks that their choice is the better option. And dubly, that is why I, as a structure myself, have selected these fists as my passion. Very interesting way to go about Diechi Yisong, just focusing on architecture. Of course, architecture being very notable because, um, thinking about Lobcorp and the architecture team being Ketter. I'm just gonna shard a bunch of these. I know it's probably not as smart to, like, shard everything, but I'm gonna want a lot of thread anyways, probably. So, you know, we'll just, we'll just do that, sure. We shouldn't need that much thread right now, but I'd like to do it, because I want to get you to up die 4. So we can take a good look at everything you've got going on. So let's see, gain insight times 3% of max speed. Yeah, as expected, a lot less max HP shield here, but that's because he kind of wants to take a bunch of damage. Coin power of target sinking, discard one skill. Lower star sacrificial by insight. Huh. I really thought it would be insight times something. Like insight times 5 or something like that. Although it is just straight up by insight, so you get, what, 6 stagger threshold reduction? That's kind of 
Mm, less than ideal. I really wish it told me where a stagger threshold right here, but I guess we'll see in time. Can't see. Inflict sinking equal to insight. Yeah, makes enough sense. Just straight up like that. Aggro to the skill set next turn, 6%. Yeah, and then grace and knowledge, 4 plus 2. Add less than half HP, coin power plus 1, so it becomes a 4 plus 3 with 4 coins. And inflicts 3 sink count with the 4th hit. Yeah, not a lot of sinking, all things considered. But we haven't looked at his counter yet, which is kind of the most notable one. Or not his counter, his passive. When attack inflicts sink on the counter, when attack plus shield inflicts one additional sink on the attacker, four times max. Okay, so you can get eight sinking onto an attacker if you get attacked with enough shield. Not really a lot. I was kind of hoping for more, I feel like. Um, initial thoughts are that the sinking is underwhelming, but it's more discard stuff, and that's fine. Ignore the fact that he's already got, you know, a really good, a, a really good sinking ID and a decent discard ID. I don't really use this guy that much, and I don't really acknowledge him a lot, but uh, he's probably decent. But anyways, time to look at the actual star of the show. Hong Lu. Let's, I'm just going to burn all my tickets on you immediately, because, you know, might as well. I'm definitely going to try getting you to max, and uh, I'll, have to, I'll, have to do, I'll have to spam a few Luxcavations before I actually start it, but that'll be fine. But yeah, let's let's see your Uptai story, first and foremost. Good thinking, let my key be the guide to your enlightenment. Very fancy. So give give us the key lore now. How do those work? Because you were he was kind of like using it as like a magnifying glass, but I wonder if it's like making it like I wonder if it's making him understand the language a little bit better. Or not language, but like the information. Aha, I see. So that's how you read this word. So is it kind of granting him some insight into his studies then? Is it like making it so he can understand words he couldn't read under otherwise? The child was reading a book through a ring on his key, muttering to himself. The book was so ancient that holding it at a slightly wrong angle could completely unbind it. Its pages were filled with numerous, indecipherable, and squiggly letters. The child didn't know exactly what each of those letters meant, but... I see. Linguistic forms other than the 13 common languages existed. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. That correlates to the centers. Yeah, it's uh, Korean, German, Spanish, Japanese, French, Chinese, English, uh, British, English, American, <laughs> uh, Russian, Italian, Swiss German, Greek, and uh, Hebrew. Assuming that's what he's, he's returning to here. So that's the only 13 languages in the city. This is me going off an assumption, but that's probably what it seems to be. He continued to stare into the ring on his key with his calm, unblinking eye. Perhaps looking through it revealed something different. Hmm, I'll have to shrink the ring a bit here. The child expertly fiddled with the ring on his key as though he was playing with a rubber band. He shrunk the key to a smaller size and returned to peering at the text through its hole. I knew it. I see that someone's erased something back here, hmm? I wonder if this correlates to any sort of singularity we know. I mean, we did very briefly hear about X-Corp singularity in Canto 5 being, you know, a special sort of alloy. Potentially the keys are made of that and that's why they're special. Although we don't know, it might be, you know, like a DHG thing. I mean, like a workshop thing or something, maybe some other random singularity. It's hard to say. There's nothing like this key when it comes to finding hidden or redacted records. It is a popularly known fact that there are two sects within the DHG Association. The Fists, who directly collect and grasp the knowledge with their own hands. The Keys, who use their tools to study something indirectly through a lens, from a distance. The Fists naturally veered towards hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, encouraged by the essence of their main mode of knowledge acquisition. And the Keys naturally veered towards using their very tools of observing and acquiring knowledge, thus charging their strength as weapons. Um, we're not allowed to touch this book, right? Hmm, I see. So fists cannot use these old books because they'll crumble if they touch them. Indeed, this is an ancient document. A slight contamination from the sebum on the surface of our skin could alter it irrevocably. <sighs> How am I supposed to really understand this without touching it? Physical contact isn't always necessary. Sufficient information can be garnered from simply taking in the text using this comparison chart that I have prepared. Now, observe this part where... Though the difference between the two sects merely boils down to the personal tastes and the upbringing of each child. 
Perhaps they would have enjoyed the convenience of a key in situations like these. And there's more. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I even noticed that. You can actually see the DHE Association, like, symbol on his hand there. Huh. Was it like that for any of the others? I don't know. Maybe it's like... Maybe they're using tattoos. Maybe their whole, like, turning knowledge into damage thing is kind of reliant on tattoos or something. Tattoos that they seem to only have on their hands. Thing. Or are those gloves? Oh, no, those are gloves, aren't they? Yeah, I just noticed, like, the seam. So they've got some sort of special gloves, like, DHE gloves or something. Maybe those do something. The keys have the advantage of being able to use their tool to strike them their enemies from afar, but the fists have no choice but to get up and close and personal with them. Ah. What the hell? Slapping people around with a key like that? Oh my, now where did you come from? I was trying to tell what's going on in the background. Is it like a, are they in like a museum or something? Or it's probably, maybe it's like a DHE like outpost or something somewhere where they've got like religious type artifacts or something. I don't know. It gives me vaguely religious vibes. And there's a painting there that looks of like a, like a oceanside villa or something. I don't know. And since it's no common knowledge that the tiny key, small enough to be used as a pendant for his necklace, can grow so large like that, it's pretty obvious why some enemies are caught completely off guard when facing off against the keys. Whew, I guess that's all there was to do for today. Now, one may wonder why anyone would ever choose the alternative over using a key, but it has its own downsides. Uh... So, where in the world am I? Yeah, so the key, so the keys actually, like, cause you to lose knowledge, while the fists don't. Yeah, that makes sense. Keys kind of, like, drain the self a little bit. Kind of similar to, like, self-white damage type stuff. Ego things. Well, that might be a stretch. To peer into a key for knowledge means that knowledge gained from sources other than the key will not be stored as strength. Enlarging the key, giving it a proper mass... It all costs knowledge gained specifically through the key. Of course, swinging about a huge key like that will inevitably burn a large quantity of knowledge. Haha, <laughs> I guess I forgot. And that's how these missions usually end. Classic Honglu. Definitely seems to fit pretty well. But yeah, keys. Very interesting. DHE, but you know, instead of being tanky, it's, you know, killy. That sort of deal. Okay, get you up. I already many levels. Take a look at your kit real quick. Yeah, so clash, discard one skill of the highest ranking all units skill slots. Clash power plus insight minus one. Okay, and then heads hit inflict one single count. Unuse reuse coin insight minus one times. Issue is it's a reuse coin instead of being like oh gain coins like before use or something. So this thing will clash as a ten usually. I guess it it'll clash like a twelve at a uh, three insight. Which is decent. Although, you know, if you don't have the insight, it'll clash like a 10, so... It doesn't gain a bunch of clash power, but on heads hit, inflict one sinking count, and reuse coin equal to how many times you... The coin is used how many times you have insight, so if you're at three insight, use it three times. Interesting stuff. Randomly discard two of his unit skills in ascending order of ranks, coin power plus insight on a three coin thing. Not too bad. And then forcing on the third hit. And then, ooh, your skill three is straight up forcing count with a third coin. 2 plus insight coin power plus insight. Oh. At 2 plus insight coin power is increased by insight. So this becomes a 5 plus 6 with 3 coins at 3 insight. And it becomes a 5 plus 5 at 2 insight. But at 1 insight it's just a 5 plus 3. Okay. And this one doesn't discard anything though. Although you will be discarding this skill a lot if you want to get some good skill ones. Deal 3% more damage for staying on target. If target is staggered, defeated, heal 10 SP. And you've got a discard evasion. Discard a skill, gain damage up equal to discarded skill rank, max 3 per turn. Another unit uh, has discarded skill, uh, if that has discarded skill rank is higher than this unit's insight value, this unit gains plus 1 insight. Yeah, so he can definitely benefit, is he, he's 3 to 7, so I think he's slow, he's faster than the other DHE ones, right? Because you're like a 4 to 6, you're like a, you're a 4 to 6 too. So he, I guess he could be low, slower, he could be faster, he's kind of got like a wider range in them, yeah. Interesting. And yeah, support passive like an SP thing. Yeah, very cool stuff. Well, that's all for the actual story of these IDs. So give me a second to um get them leveled up a bit and then get prepared for the actual run itself. Alright, I've done a little bit of leveling up and I have the team 
basically set up already. We're gonna be running this team. Of course, the DHAD is a little bit of sinking stuff. And of course, we're going to be starting out with none other than the two gifts we need to fuse in order to get the actual sinking fusion. Because why wouldn't we? In case you don't know, I'll pull up the singing guide, the fusion guide real quick, and yeah, you can see here, we need the Headless Portrait and the Midwinter Nightmare in order to get the Black Sheep music, which we have started out with here. So yeah, let's just get going. Um, as far as what the actual team itself is going to look like, I'm probably going to try and use you first, of course, because you're the newest one. Probably something like this. Oh, you've, you're, I don't know, why are you selected? Okay. I didn't need to, I didn't need to deselect everyone, but I just got caught off guard. Um... We'll do something like this. I was considering uh, you, but you're a little low-leveled, and you're also annoying to manage on a team of more people. But yeah. Also, they've got some interesting Senefinis, that's for sure. Like, you've got Lust. Doesn't match up with, you know, what you had, which is probably for the best. Although, it does mean that you guys don't quite fuel um, Rhymeshank quite as well as, you know, other sinking units might. You've, yeah, you've got, like, a Gloom skill 2 and a Gloom Evade, but you've got no Gloom or Envy. But oh well. Spamming Rhyme Shank is the lame way to do sinking. It's also, like, the only way, but no need to pay any mind to that. Yeah, look, look at him there. He's just kind of, like, holding it, like, on his finger. Just kind of chilling. And yeah, yeah, you can see, like, the little DHA symbol in the gloves, too, there. Interesting how the, the fists, of course, use brown gloves, but, you know, the keys use white gloves. That's probably just why I didn't notice it before. Yeah. It makes enough sense. Yeah, they're doing they're they're in pretty similar poses, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I don't think I need to look at that too much more, but their outfits are almost identical. The only difference seems to be that like keys wear their little scarfy thing shorter than fists. I don't know. But yeah, discard stuff means we gotta pay a little bit of attention. We've actually started with a skill two from you. So we could discard a skill two, use this thing twice, might as well. Get that going a little early. And then Yi Song, um, we can discard that one. Yeah, you can discard a skill 3 immediately. You're gonna need to learn their Sin Affinity so we can actually use them appropriately. Yeah, Yi Song lost his class, but we double keyed with Hong Lu. That's cool. The Keyblade, after all. Very funny. Um. You can discard skill 2, or you could just... You should probably just win the Clash. You kind of need the Sanity. <laughs> we probably shouldn't worry too much about the shenanigans until we actually have a little bit of Sanity going. You can discard another skill 2 here, though, yeah. Yeah, the this, this skill 3 is... Oh, no, you're actually going to discard a... Oh, yeah, you'll actually discard the skill 3 if I do it like this. Or if I did it like this, actually. You'd discard... You'd discard the skill 3 here if you did this, and then you'd have nothing to discard to use a 3 and say, Okay, that, that checks out. Insight's fun to manage, that's also for sure. Although I kind of was not bothering even like thinking about it for the sake of Rodion, because you know she's not the new one, but I probably should. Okay, is Yisung gonna lose another clash? No, he actually won. Okay, that's good. Get him to neutral sandy. He kinda needs it right now. The unveil, yeah, bring it inside three, and there's nothing else to discard because we discarded both of our other skills, so we remain at inside three for the key attack with the skill one. So we get to see how it looks like with three. Very nice. We need a little more sandy on him first and foremost before he can actually do it decently, but uh you should just be able to kill him. Oh, it's also oh it's a resonance. I didn't even realize it was res I didn't even look at that part. Oh, that's kind of important to note. So you only gain your damage up with a gloom resonance. Very interesting because your Gloom is your skill, too, which just seems like the least interesting skill to use for you, so I don't know. Hmm. Don't know how much I like that. Yeah, but now it seemed to be, like, it's, like, the main reason he wants discard beyond Insight. Because, like, the Fists gain, like, shield and stuff when they discard their skills, but not him. So I don't know. A little bit uncertain about that, especially because my plan was to probably change his skill 2s to his skill 3 or something when we get him in the shops commit to that bit, but don't know. A little hard to say at this point now. Gotta figure out what exactly would be best. Well, that should be fine. Blunt weak fight? Alright. The fists are pure blunt, I believe, right? 
You don't have any, like, random pierce decks, do you? You do. You're skill 1 through random pierce deck. Okay. And I know you're a slash, but your skill 3 is also blunt. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. Get your funny skill 1 going. Favored means you might lose the clash. Actually, no. You should be fine, because you'll gain clash power from the insight. Yeah. It's not factoring that in there, right? Good to know. So you'll have uh, two insights. So you'll gain plus one clash power. So this should become a... Oh, no, it is factoring it. Yeah, it's 6 to 11. Hmm. Well, oh, well, we'll still go for it. Talking too much. We can get an insight three skill two off for you. That's nice. And we can do that, I guess. You can't do anything too fancy right now. <laughs> Focus is good sinking, although the enemy does not have a lot of sinking. Hopefully we get the compass. We should be able to get the compass floor four. Floor four is usually really good for that. Yeah, once again, why is Honglu always the one to gain, like, the tax that just give him more coins with, like, his skill 1, skill 2s? Like, there's a lot of Honglu identities that do that so far, and it's it's very interesting, that's for sure. Oh, this is unfortunate. Um, Because if you use this, then you'll get to Insight 1 here, which is not great. But if you use this, you'll also just be stuck at Insight 1. I guess take this so you can be at Insight 2 for at least a single key attack. Alright. And Yuzang doesn't have any choices. Could do also gotta remember we can defend. Although, of course, that only does discard if we're actively, like, clashing with the defend, so... Still rather limited. God, just... I really... Do not think I like the whole, this is a resonance passive. There really aren't a lot of good resonance passives. And that's just because it's really hard to trigger unless you're building around it. And usually it's building around it's kind of like antithetical to the actual team. Unless you're doing like Envy, of course. But even the actual like Envy based IDs aren't Envy resonance egos, I don't think, for the most part. That was great coat, that's nice. We do have a fair bit of gloom skills, and we do need to use that for Honglu's passive. Alright. I almost, like, d proceeded to not get the fusion here. If you have Black Sheet music, five more identities have sinking, we have that. Hitting any of the skill, like, potency, five. And all enemies regain sinking count equal to half the sinking count consumed last turn. Cool little gift, nothing too special. It's one of, like, the kind of more... It's definitely on the weaker side as far as the fusion gifts go, but it's still nice. And, um... You've got Sinking Deluge, so enemies having more Sinking Count is always a good thing. Although we don't have Sinking Deluge here. This is the situation where we do not have such a thing. So we can try discarding for you. Eh, no. I consider it. I guess in a situation where we have a skill 2 and a skill 3, hmm, it's hard to say what exactly I want to do. Yeah, it's only trigger when you extra trigger the passive. Can't trigger here unless we did some defensey stuff. Yeah, unless we had you evade. I don't know. If we're given a skill two and a skill three, what's the play? Do we get a skill two off that has you that gets you know three insight? That's probably pretty good because it gains plus two coin power, so it becomes a four plus six. Yeah, we'll go for that. Seems like the kind of unit where I just don't really think I need to use this. The skill three is kind of a finisher, you know, dealing more damage per sinking on the target and also being good sinking count. I guess the good scene count doesn't make it a finisher, but you know what I'm getting going for. So you sure do have more attacks than we do, that's rude. Hopefully that other attack is hitting someone who's, you know, just gonna tank it. It shouldn't really matter too much, though. A lot of SP damage on you already. You're not feeling too happy, are you? No. Hmm. I mean, we do this, yeah? This will just this will get us insight three. Okay, it looks good. Uh, when you have a skill two and a skill three, what should you do? Should you skill three? You don't discard on skill three. What's your insight? At? Insight two. You actually don't get any benefit from insight on your skill three. Hmm. I guess you do this and get a bunch of sinking off with your skill two. Sure. Sounds good enough. Morale morale boost. Uh, no thanks. That's just more haste for Hong Lu and Otis. <laughs> We don't necessarily need haste. Not that anyone really needs haste on a team like this. Morale boost is good, but not particularly for our current gimmick. Also, they all lost even more Sandy because Shmi died. 
Good stuff. Yeah, DHA discard IDs are a lot of fun. DHA especially, because it's discard and insight, you kind of got to balance at the same time. Like this turn, for example, you guys are already at max insight. So if you use stuff that doesn't discard at all, you will stay at max insight. Although that's not going to be possible. Unless... Eh, that's going to clash, yeah. If that didn't clash, you could actually theoretically get such a thing off. But you'll discard one skill the highest slot, so you'll discard the skill 3... Then this will discard the skill 1 and get you back down to 1 insight. But you'll get a good skill 1 off in such a situation. Actually, if we do this... This works, right? I think so. I'm pretty sure you can defend like that, if I'm not mistaken. Unless they've changed something. And then here... Oh, this isn't going to be great. That's fine. We'll get, you know, 2 insight. Okay, seems good. Pretty certain you can't discard skills that are blocked with defensive skills. I feel like that's something I tested out with DHA Rodeon back when she first released. So it does give you, like, another option. In that if you want, don't want to, like... If there's a skill 1 or something you do not want to discard, you can just replace it with a block instead, and it shouldn't be discarded. And it should be able to keep your people at high insight thanks to such an action. Yeah, it looks like it worked. You're still at 3, you're still at 2. So all went according to plan. Yeah, the skill's still there, so you can't, like, it's not like old skill cycling used to be, where, you know, you could just put a block over a skill and just draw through your deck faster. But it does give us a pretty nice way to just manipulate our discard stuff into our inside stuff a little better, which is cool. It's a little hard to micromanage three DHADs at the same time, which is probably why I'm ignoring Rodion a lot. Also, Rodion's discard is, in is incredibly reliant on have her having multiple skill slots. So the fact that she's, you know, third in the order means that it's, there's not a lot of min-maxing I really can do for her stuff. But that's fine. Um, Blunt. Blunt. Yeah, Burn Charge doesn't help at all. Blunt. Ooh. I mean... Like, Carmel's good, but we gotta take the Sinking Synergy. That's that's a given. That's a given. We get a shop now, we've got a lot of cost. Hopefully we get to choose some DHE people. Rodeon. You don't really feel like changing your since you're, you know, not a new person, but it's it's potentially a move. That's gloom. Yeah, none of that's gloom. Yisong, though. Oh, Downpour. That's funny. Not a Tremor team, though. So I don't really care too much. Homeward for safety. Yisung. We'll change your skills. Let's see. Do we want to do more skill 1 change in skill 2 to skill 3? Sure. We'll try that. I don't know how useful... I don't know how good of a move that was, but, you know, we'll roll with it. Mm, yeah. Nothing too great here. We'll take Grand Welcome for safety, and then we'll probably just move on. Nice to have Eagle Resource in case things go wrong, which they do love to do. Okay. Moths. Nice. Moths are also super nice. It's just that's Because that's just a way to get some SP up for, you know, our non-important party members. Is it a pretty healer SP? I assume it does, right? I think so. Might be going insane. But that's good, because they might be useful in future checks. It's hard to say. Only time will tell. Let's see, let's skill two. Um, Want to do it? Maybe, yeah, we'll do it. Okay. You're weak to wrath. Okay, we'll go for that then. Sure. You can... We gotta grace the knowledge off here. Just beat that guy up a bunch. Focus you. We acknowledge you. Risky climax you. And then dodge you so we trigger your passive so that you get two damage up this turn. Seems good. It seems worthwhile to have someone like uh, Sinclair on such a team who's just got an evade that's gloom and we can just use it whenever we want to trigger Hongo's passive for a little bit of damage up. What it, you know, otherwise lines up properly. I do, I do like resonance passives because I think sin affinity teams are a cool idea, and I think starting with envy was probably the single worst sin affinity to go with because envy already has so much, because it has hex nail and it also has W corp units and like quick suppression, a lot of super strong envy stuff. Could benefit a lot of random sin affinities just kind of get a little bit of focus. Okay. Yeah, we can have you do some slashing, maybe. 
You get three coins off. Actually, well, if you try killing there, because you'll discard a skill three. Probably would just be beneficial to use the skill three more so, but, you know, I gotta commit to the bet. That's what I do best. Let me get a bunch of sloth resonance stuff going here. Sure, why not? You're definitely not getting the kill. But, you know, it's worth it for the sloth resonance. I guess they do have a lot of sinking. That is the one thing. I didn't see how much sinking the bottom right had, but we attacked it with blood. I don't remember. I don't even remember when hit by Hong Lu, so maybe decent sinking? I don't remember. You can definitely feel the sinking damage building up super fast on these enemies, though, and they're just kind of perishing because of it. You actually did get the kill thanks to that. That's nice. You're the only one alive, so we just kill you. Nothing else to it. Good stuff. And we press the buttons at the last second for the sake of the bit. So you're gaslighting people who don't know what's going on, maybe. Lobotomy pack? That's also good. Blunt or blunt? Decisions, decisions. I know. It's a toughie. It's a, it's a real toughie. But, you know, I think, I, think, I think I'll be able to pull through. Okay, you don't have any choices. Unless I wanted to do this, but there's no benefit to that. You're discarding a skill one and nothing's happening. That's fine. Sure, yeah, all our discard people just drew two skill two, two skill ones, so they're not doing much here. We'll save your skill three, though, so we can do it in a turn where you were actually going to get a benefit from Hong Lu's passive. I guess it is nice, because most of these people do discard with their skill ones, which means they can't actually, um... Cycle through their skill ones a little faster. The exception being Rodion's skill one has no discards whatsoever. Maybe she would have been from a block then or something like that. But, oh well. Discard two things. Okay, that'll work. Something like that, yeah. We get the passive going. You'll definitely get to max damage up through that. Yes, nice. And then Sloth Resonance is a little risky. But I believe in you. Shouldn't have believed in you, yeah? No, I should have. Okay, that's good. Nice. Love the- love, love looking through a key. Oh god, a lot of sinking things to that. Which, you know, makes a lot of sense. Don't get me wrong, but... Feel very funny. Another three coin attack. Attacking sinking on normal enemies so they just take SP damage instead of actually taking normal damage is fine. You should just do this. Yeah, probably. That'll work. Discard a skill too. Nice. Or you could discard it. No, that's a skill one, right? Right. We do that, and that should be pretty good. No Gloom this turn, so we're definitely not going to bother going for the key passive. Although, I mean, we did have Gloom technically. We could have Brodian go for like a skill one, could have evaded a bit. You know what I mean, though. Not worth it this turn. Okay, one good key, second good key. I'll probably make sure against like actual bosses and stuff, I'll probably remove Sinclair for a turn, or for a fight. Just so we can get more going on with the uh, Yi Song. Either way, these guys are all dead this turn. So you know, we'll get the Sloth Resonance. We'll we'll, we'll trigger the key passive because why not? They need to have some sort of animation for discard though. They gotta like show like on the bottom or something like maybe like an image of like the skill kind of being like discarded or something like maybe the skill kind of like dissolving or something or maybe just kind of showing up and then disappearing. I don't know. Because I understand how it works pretty well at this point, but I was really confused at first when I was trying to use the discard stuff, that's for sure. Not because it's, like, that complex of a mechanic, but just because, like, it's kind of phrased in a way that... Oh, I forgot to move Sinclair, that's fine. It's kind of phrased in a way that I didn't exactly fully get the bit at first. Luckily, this is pink shoes, so, um, not really that big of a deal. Oh, we can get... You can get some some good... Attackage there. You probably want to redirect with someone else though, you know, like hit you with like uh, one of these. Probably want to redirect that with another person though.
We'll have you redirect it. Sure, that sounds good. Starting the big guy first, because why not? Should do some decent damage there, thanks to our, the expending of knowledge we were attempting. Yeah, nice stuff. Stagger thing at the sinking. Might just die from our other random attacks? It, sure, it is two skill ones, but um, he is kind of low. Oh, he was at 8 HP. I didn't realize he was that low. <laughs> yeah, okay, that works. We just gotta kill the enchanties now. Pretty easy. Can you clash that? We can, uh... I mean, if we do this, we stay at 3 sinking, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. So it sounds good. Oh, we actually lost that clash. Unfortunate. Yeah, we sure do stay at 3 insight. Very powerful, that's for sure. If we just... Yeah, there is definitely a benefit to only having a single skill slot. Because then it's a lot easier to maintain... Just not blocking anything if you get... I mean, that works with the two skill slots, too. I don't know. I'm pondering within my head. What are we thinking? Damage dealt off? Enemies deal 15% more damage, we gain more max H... And they gain more max HP, but it gives us blood, sweat, and tears, so we do more damage to stagger people? Sure. That'll be fine. Rest stop time. Anything we want to enhance... Not really. You're only there for a potential fusion thing. I don't think we've got any other gloom. We could actually get rid of the gray coat. That is true. I mean, we really just want the compass for sinking, though. And we kind of need to get a tier 3 for that. And a gray coat and curriculum vitae will not do that. That's a tier 2 moment. Yeah. We'll wait on that, then. Here's our slash. Um. Hmm. Probably slash because it's safer. I was thinking about it, like, from, like, a, oh, which do we have more of? But then I remember Pierce is kind of scary in Mirror Dungeon 3. Mainly on later floors, but still. Rather not have deal with, like, a random Piklod fight or something. Not the most fun thing. Hmm. Sure, get the two insight. That's something. And then you just... I use the skill 3 because there's not much else for you to do. Hopefully we can change Hong Lu's skills a little bit more. Uh, some skill 2 to skill 3s would be nice. I really want to focus on his skill 1 a fair bit because it is a fun skill 1 to use. Love a good scramble skill 1. It's, it's a nice little strategy you can do with DHE Rodian, for example. Although it's a little bit harder there because um, DHE Rodian's whole thing about discarding like the weakest skill kind of works against her a lot of times. Well, I just, just want to go for full sloth here as much as possible at least. Because is it, like, the best option? Definitely not. Our insight's not going to be great. But, um, Big Sloth. Also, Stagger names take more damage from Sloth thanks to having, um, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. God, that attack keeps on throwing me off from, uh, Yisong, his skill 3. Because the fourth coin, like, hits in two parts, so it always feels super underwhelming, but then the other damage hits, and you're like, ah, that's the fourth coin's damage. That makes more sense. That sort of thing, you know? Well, we're doing a lot of damage here. We don't really get the sinking the stagger bonus because we only just barely stagger enemies. Although, I guess, uh, Sinclair did. That's something. Also, that's a lot of uh, sinking on you. Oh, yeah, and these guys, when they're low morale, they just don't do anything for the rest of the fight, so we can just kind of throw whatever. We can look through a key, get the damage up, potentially, although I wasn't really paying attention to what he was doing this turn, so maybe he's not actually going to gain much of anything from that. That'd be fine if so. Seems good. Also should mention that, um... Really excited because, um, because I'm, I'm recording this as usual, like, the night the update's coming out. But tomorrow morning, uh, next Yakuza game does release on Steam. So that's exciting. By the time this video comes up, it'll have all have already been playing it for a couple hours at least. I have to get through school, unfortunately. I have a couple classes in the morning, but after that I'll just be able to do some gaming. I might do a little bit of, like, I might record, like, an episode or two after this, just for the sake of getting it out of the way, because I'm going to be invested in infinite wealth when it comes out. It'll be good. That's for sure. That's my way of saying, uh, that's my excuse for there not being a stream this weekend. Last weekend, it was just because I was overwhelmed in general because Dog, but he's relatively settled down now. I know how to, uh, hire him a little better. 
Gregor is just currently sleeping on my bed. He's pretty much, every time I record now, he's usually asleep. Oh, that is not good. Oh, that is really not good, huh? <laughs> um, hmm. That's interesting. Well, we need to use some egos here, I think. Land of Illusion, Mass Attack, potentially. Rhyme Shank, Sinking, potentially. Um, you're just gonna... I don't want to spend a lot of resources at this time. Not because we can't afford it, but because, you know, Ego Spam is kind of lame. But we kind of need to do that to win any clashes here. Alright. Yeah, next week's stream should return to normal. Next week there might be a stream, depending on, you know, I guess... Friday morning, we're going to see what next week's going to have for us. Probably not any new IDs, but I'm still kind of betting on it being uh, the Railway Week. I'm kind of unfortunate if it is, though, since if I want to make, you know, the video I did for, like, Railway 2 and stuff, where I just kind of go over, like, all the have-nos and what their potential will be like, uh, I'll have to cut to the opposite time, into my infinite wealth of time. Surely I can manage that, though. Surely. I surely won't have a problem but just be playing it non-stop, surely. <laughs> so I am, in fact, mostly caught up on the series. I guess I still did not touch uh, Gaiden, but... Hopefully that'll be fine. I don't know. Sure is how you'll chart your own path. Like, I, I, I really wonder what they're going to do with Heathcliff's ego after Kanto 6, because, like, sure, they could change the line or anything, but he sure still is going to be swinging a dead body around. Like, you can twist that all you want, it's not exactly, uh... Not exactly the most normal thing to do, you know? Do that, sure. Um... This actually might lose, depending on the hero. Okay, that's fine. Um, maybe they'll actually do, like, an animation change or something. I know, it's kind of unfortunate they didn't change, you know, the songs at all. I really think, if nothing else, they should make it so they actually have a custom background. Because there's pretty obvious inspiration for both Yi Song and, uh... Ishmael's, what they, their backgrounds would look like. Because, you know, Yi Song's got, you know, the actual... Like, the League. While Ishmael has, like, that, like, starry sea near the end of Kanto 5. I don't know. Another thing I think I've definitely talked about a bunch of times, but... Feels like a missed opportunity, but who knows? There's definitely a pretty high chance we get upgraded Zany base egos another point down the road. So maybe then. Voodoo doll, sure. Forced into an Avna fight, or Pekatule fight, I should specify, since in Mirror Dungeon 3, every single Avna fight or every single focus encounter you see that isn't like a boss is Pegatule. Unlike, you know, back in Mirror Dungeon 1 times and whatnot, when you had a chance of finding just like random like Inquisitors and stuff just randomly on these floors. It's just Pegatule now, which is fine. I'm not really that big of a deal. Don't know why I'm making it sound like it's a big deal. <laughs> Let's see, can you get anything good going on here? You might win that clash, okay. Bingo might win clashes, oof. Okay. I like the looks of this. Some a little less than ideal clashes, as is often the case, but that's fine. Everyone got a bit of damage up, and I don't know why. What's giving- oh, it's that- oh, never mind. I know why, it's the Aerohorn. Whatever it's called. I forget its name. The one you get from the Helper Aberration. It just gives you a damage up every turn against- Focus encounters against Abnos in general, I guess, and Focus encounters are Abnos. Nice. A little bit of two insight key gaming going on there. Honglu continues to get like the most like fun ideas. I feel like maybe not the most fun, the most like mechanically. Interesting idea or something? I don't know. That's a, that's a very strange way of saying it. I don't know exactly what it is I'm, I want to say in, about it, but... It's something. You just dodge nothing so we can get peering through a key. Um, but even in the game launch, he had both Kurokumo and Ting Tang. Ting Tang being single-handedly the most interesting launch ID in the game. And Ting and Kurokumo being uh, 
pretty good for its very wacky skill, too. But he's got stuff like K Corp, he's got stuff like. Hook is just a really good bleed, like, haste stuff. Um. What idea am I forgetting about? Oh, Liu, I'm forgetting about- okay. That's the exception to the rule. <laughs> I, th I think it's pretty safe to say it is very much the exception. Um, shouldn't come as any sort of shock. But you know what I'm saying, he's got a lot of cool ideas. I'm just getting this one too. Ong is a cool character. Once again, I he definitely has not gotten a lot of development yet, but like Kanto 4 alone pretty much sold me on him, and how he, you know, acts when he's taking the role of Youngji feels very genuine. So I think he's a pretty good person. And of course, he comes from a rich family, yada yada, he's kind of like oblivious to stuff, all that sort of thing, but he's cool. I think, I think that's fair enough to say. Okay, Disc Fragment, one of the worst Ego Gifts in the game. Handshake of handshakes. Sure thing, we can have you do this. You need to get both heads, that's... 11 HP and SP damage, how scary. Oh, it's frog time! We love Gluppo. We love a good Gluppo in the morning. Should be pretty fine. Probably a decent fight for actually getting, you know, some funny inside shenanigans going. You're mostly weak to gloom, but yeah, left eye is resist weak to gloom while everything else is resistant. I think I misspoke there, but you know what I meant. Hopefully. I got some singing going here. Especially on this eye. Yeah, that's true. Probably just get the rhyme shank going. You know it's gonna happen. It's actually hitting everything here, and it's targeting the person we were just targeting anyway, so that's convenient. You clash that. Uh, you're weak to wrath and envy. Okay. Yeah, I shouldn't be that shocked. Um, we'll you go for that and we'll redirect it with something else, potentially. You clashed that, not the best clash, but it should still be fine. And we do something like this, redirect that. Um, You're not going to win this clash, but that might be fine. We could have you block, actually. Get some singing through the block, that's true. Because you should have shield, you'll discard, you'll have 3% shield, it's not a lot, but you also have the shield you gain from the actual attack itself. Okay, yeah, this seems decent. This neutral is probably worthy of a snag harpoon, because then we actually trigger the key passive, so we gain, you know, 2 damage up on Honglu this turn. That's good. He'll do a lot of damage. Tail is unfortunate, but that's fine. Wish the Rhyme Shank went first, but you know, I knew it wasn't going first already. I, I had already accepted that as being the case. Yeah, we get we get a bunch of sync in here. We staggered the eye that Hong Lu or that yeah that Hong Lu attacked. Snag harpoon. Throw your funny little harpoon. Bonk. Pull it towards you and bonk. There's the actual bonk. I said bonk a little too early when I meant to do more of like a psh kind of thing, like a psh, like a piercing sound effect. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay, we've staggered both of your eyes here. How do you feel? How do you like them apples? Which eye is weak to what? Left eye is... Left eye is the one that's weak to the gloom. Okay, we're gonna kill that thing horribly then. That's the play. You can win a clash there. Expend a knowledge. Um, you've got two insight. That's decent. We'll keep it at two then. I guess you should go for the right eye then, since the right is the one weak to wrath. You know, just attack this part a bunch, and we should be able to do a notable amount of damage to it. Don't know exactly how much- oh. I forgot to clash against the other thing, the actual body was going for it, aren't I? That's fine. We did just straight to break the right eye there. Oh, you're going to crow into Rhyme Shank. Oh, what, what, a, what a shame. Are we going to inflict more sinking on this guy? How tragic. God, that's a lot more sinking count going on. Yeah. No chance. Did it break both eyes though, yeah? I think we did, so Rodion Sandy is not looking great. Oh, there's the compass. Okay. Final power plus two. Ooh. 
a little scary, but I think we can handle it. Defense level minus four is nice, at least. And we do gain another gift on top of the compass. Oh, it's not too late for tomorrow's fortune. Especially when, you know, burn, bleed. Not exactly great choices. We get another shop, finally. Hong Lu skills, excellent. So skill two to skill three, I think that's for sure. Already said as much, and I'm going to stick to it. We actually don't need to go for gloom stuff that hard, but it could be nice to get more gloom. There's like no gloom I guess it feels like. Everything I think is like, oh, this might be gloom, and it ends up being uh, pride instead. But there's not really much else we really want is the issue. We go, yeah, I'll take red stained gossipium. Wow. Take the uh, cigarette holder, yeah. I'll take the oscillating bracelet, which we could have. No, we wouldn't have. I'm thinking something different. I'm thinking the actual other glove, which we would not have gotten from the handshake of handshakes. Oh, fiery down. Sure, why not? Skill final power down. What a hassle. Oh, we get contract. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, do we take the risky encounter because it's blunt, even if it means less options? Yeah, what are the chances we actually would have gotten another vent there? Would have been a little too nice. Yep, I sure am gambling on the fact that I don't think this game will be nice. Fair enough way to go about doing it, I think. You did corrode, Zoo. Hmm. Okay. Well... That's good, at least. You kind of need to get as much shield as you can. Uh, Mario, I mean, you guys should relatively be fine. We're gonna use a, use a couple of egos here, don't get me wrong. Might go for the Corroded Ardor Blossom Star just to kill these guys a little hard. Oh, right, that won't work. Then we won't clash because of how that works. We need to Capote, yeah. That's okay. We just use Zayans here, and that should be decent. A lot of egos. That's okay. That's... Oh, I think. Oh, it's decent damage. It's two targets. How swell. And we are. If we can get, like, Wound Claret or something, like, we could have some funny things happen. Fourth Match Flame is a little scary. Mostly because of the Wrath Fragility, though, and because of the fact that Sinclair is weak to Slash, and he is weak to Wrath, I believe, yeah. So he took a fair bit of damage there, but he's taking enough that 100 damage isn't even enough to stagger him, I don't think. That's good. He's close to being staggered, but Sinclair is still doing fine-ish. And he'll, he'll trigger full body effects, so he'll heal up a little bit here. Not with the Wrath skills, so it's only, you know, an eighth of his the HP is missing, but an eighth of the HP he's missing is still like 13, 14 HP. Which, now that I say it out loud, really isn't a lot. Thumbs the brakes. Also, I really should have had the other Ego on. I should have had Pursuance on, not 4th Match Flame. Only now realize that. Because, you know, it would actually synergize pretty well, but that's fine. Not that big of a deal, I don't think. We can discard a skill 3 with a block, potentially. Get a bunch of shield, shouldn't take too much damage. Nails shouldn't be too bad. Sloth Resonance will not do enough for us, I don't think. Nope. Well, I guess we'll discard, uh, skill one. That's not a lot. Yeah. Well, we do this, get you to three insight. Potentially just get this triggered, might as well. Uh, you kind of do need to clash a little bit, though. So we'll what is cast so you can get a better clash going, get a little bit of sanity increase. Not a lot, but it's, oh, never mind. Or you could just lose. I guess then you don't lose sanity, though, but mm, that's fine. Nice tails in the focus, Otis. Long lose gaming, if nothing else. Hmm. Let's see. We can do this and we'll just discard two more skill threes, sure. Or we can do this, actually. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, we'll discard another skill three and we'll actually use a skill three to win a clash. Get some sloth going. We don't have anyone else that's got, like, a decent gloom thing here, do we? We'll, we'll pop this, yeah, that'll work. Because I want to use get the key going so we get a bunch more power, or a bunch more d damage up on you. 30% damage up is nice. Although it will only be on the skill 2 since skill 1 doesn't discard, but 
It's still a nice benefit. It'll still make sure we get a kill, I think. Snag Harpoon, thanks to being, you know, funny back attack. Attack. Attacks back. And we get triple key going there. That thing's almost dead. Don't know why I call it a thing when it is a person, but maybe it's because it is a rude person and therefore deserves to be belittled, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> don't really know what I'm getting at here. Don't know why, and like, I feel like in the recent weeks I've started just to say here without the H, and I genuinely do not have the slightest clue as to how this could have happened. Like, maybe there's some sort of logical reason that's kind of slipping my mind, but I highly doubt it. I don't know. Compulsion, nice. A little bit of safety for the sake of the clash win. And we've got some good stuff come from Honglu this turn. Max power, skill 2, and then do a max power, skill 3, or 1. Just to get some good key damage going. And straight up kills there, nice. Passive definitely helped. Yeah, I really like DHA Honglu, yeah. Really fun stuff. It's kind of like what I liked about DHA Rodin, except instead of being a tank, it's on an attacker. I go, okay, I'll take downpour here if you're going to offer it to me again. Sure. Slash risky encounter is going to be like, it's just going to be Kanto 2 enemies, isn't it? There's still not a lot of slash enemies in the game. Oh, or it's just bugs. <laughs> That works too, I guess. Definitely wasn't expecting the bugs, but eh, I'll take it. We were struggling if we go for that there. We can dodge then. Yeah, I like the idea of going for the dodge. It should work decently well, and it means that we'll be at 3 insight next turn. Okay. Being them clashes, though, a um, little bit dire. You know. We'll uh, go for a couple attacks. Seems good enough. Thanks to the sloppy stuff going on there. That's, yeah, that's good, okay. Ooh. Close. Okay, well, at least you... I mean, you still discarded a skill one there, so you did have a bit of a barrier up there. And you did at least stop most of the coins. You're only taking one coin from that guy, that's fine. Reginald is good damage because it is hitting a slash weak enemy with a slash attack. And it's also the rupture, which is funny, but not that useful for us. So that's okay. Such is the ideal, as some people would put it. Okay, nice. Okay, this quota should be decent. Wrath damage of next turn. Actually, that is something to keep in mind. A wrath team is actually pretty good here if we really want to go with like the full skill one spammy stuff with East or with Hong Lu. Yeah, okay, yeah, we, we can definitely can this turn. Uh, although, if we wanted to do that, we probably should have fourth match flame last turn for the wrath fragility, but it's only something that just now came to me, so it makes sense. Yeah, we do this, we'll discard another skill three, which means we should try and get your passive active. So we'll do that. Also, there is a bad clash going on with the song, but that's fine. I don't know, I've really not been paying much attention to Yi song this fight, but I don't really feel like he's doing too much. I think I think he doesn't have a great chance of dethroning Spice Bush, but I think they could make him one of the most busted two stars in the game, he still would have a good chance of dethroning it. So that's kind of how it is. Not like that big of a deal. Yeah, we'll stay with we'll go for some three insight some three insight skill there. Oh uh, yeah, we'll do this. Like to get the passive off again. Oh you're not discarding anything this turn, we don't actually need to get the passive off. Okay. If we go for full slow off, will it actually turn out to be good there? No, but you're Mary actually you'll be fine. A lot of punches, a lot of sanity damage that really isn't adding up to much, but that's how it is. 
these unveils are going are pretty strong though from Honolulu, thanks to being three insight skill twos. Love to see it. And these enemies are weak to slash, so you know, benefiting a lot. And we can do something similar here, yeah. Nice. Except with the skill ones this time. Yeah, it's really he's really going he just seems to be getting like perfect stuff every turn. I should probably like look at it like analytically at some point. That could be fun though. See like every single pop possible combination of skills you could draw and like what the optimal play is there. But there's a lot to do with discard insights up. PHE is so cool. Like, it's just, the management aspect of it is so fun. It's like what I was, like, hoping for something like... It's what I was hoping uh, Grip Sinclair was going to be, if I'm going to be completely honest. I thought I was hoping it would be a very, like, resource management type deal. When it really wasn't that heavy into that. Maybe we can do that, yeah, that'll work. We can trigger the passive again. Just have Honglu kill these guys even harder. Unveil skill one. We're just not even bothering with this skill three like at all because like it's just feels so strong to spam the skill one and skill two that I really haven't been giving it much of a chance. Although his skill three is the one that inflicts the singing count, isn't it? Which is pretty good. Although, you know, rhyme shank. Simple as that sometimes. Okay, but I think do we get the boss now or is there another fight or something? Ooh, we can take the tattoo. That's cool. Does... Does all really skill one count as a single coin? I actually don't know. Oh, we still have more stuff on this floor. That felt like a long fight. I guess it was a long fight. They were being pretty bulky. Okay, we'll take the normal blunt encounter then. Don't need to do anything fancy here, I don't think. Okay, it's, I mean, it's similar, guys, to what just happened. That's okay. And we can immediately get to three insight. Yeah, that skill two to skill three thing really seems to just make his skill just work so perfectly. I'm kind of amazed how, like, well it's just going in general. Might just be because that's, it's like, easy to amaze me or something. <laughs> I don't know. The kind of thing that's a little strange to get so, like worked up over it feels like but also very in character yep yeah okay. check the passive there you know get some damage up on that key Okay, um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, it seems per Actually, like, if we wanted to, we could just do... One of, like, these types of deals. We won't actually discard anything if we do such thing, but we can get a strong skill 3 off. It gains, like, the power, so it just kind of kills... Which means we don't need to actually bother with his passive, although we're going to trigger it here anyways, but that's fine. But yeah, we'll just get a lot of damage off. No 30% damage increase, but that's fine. It's strong. Either way. Yeah, this is a little overkill too, you know. Having the three insight skill three on any with 80 HP that's like staggered and stuff. There was no chance they had of living. Oh, and, and look at this. We can get even more good skill ones off now too. It's all just perfectly falling into place time after time. And I'm just amazed by it. Is this the best designed kit of all time? Maybe, honestly. I mean, I'm also using him with, you know, his kit change. He's got an extra skill 3 instead of a skill 2. In this situation, it would be a little harder to get, you know, to 3 insight as consistently. But still, jeez. It's just working. 
<laughs> I'm being like, I'm, I just keep getting dumbfounded by it because it's just working. And like, it's that, it's that easy apparently. Also, it is triggering Elite Bloomer's tattoo when we hit with his skill one, in case you didn't check, notice. Every time as well, because it is technically using a single coin skill three times. Does it work with the commemorative coin then? Actually, a really good question, because there haven't been any single coin attacks that can get reused before. It's only ever been like two or more coin attacks. Okay, Pearson Gloom. All right, we'll actually remove you this time so we can get double Hong Lu gaming on this fight. Sounds beneficial. And we'll see which of the three it is. KQE. Oh, this guy dies to sinking. Like, it's comical how easily this guy dies to sinking. But, you know, first things first, we can get that going. I mean, that looks good, yeah. We're immediately up to three insight with uh, Hong Lu because it's just worked once again. Simple as that. You can see it's triggering the late bloomer's tattoo three times there, so he's gaining five offense level up and defense level up next turn. Crowded rhyme shank to get the sinking up. Hey, I guess I should mention now that we do have this Hong Lu, every single sinner does have three three star IDs. So we're at the point where no matter what IDs we get next, it will be a fourth three star for at least someone, which means perfect timing for Captain Ishmael potential. <laughs> kind of fits. It's, it's been a while since Ishmael got an ID, since you know it hasn't been since. Uh... Oh God, this was a lot of damage. Um, sorry, I got distracted. Hasn't been the, since the, uh... I'll do that, sure. Get the discard going. So we can get the maximum damage by doing this. Yeah, we don't need to use another one of those. Um, what was I saying, though? Um, yeah. She hasn't gotten an ID since she got Molar, which was, you know, the last mid-chapter, or the mid-chapter of Kanto, of Season 2. You're, 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 this guy's cooking so much right now. Oh, look at this! Look at this! He just killed... Sure, like, 300 of that damage on the sinking, but even if you ignore the sinking damage, that was still, like, a 400 damage attack from, like, a... Honestly, easy enough to set up attack. Then I guess it's not the easiest. I'm kind of oversimplifying it, but god. More bleed. <laughs> They're taking... What do I take? What do I want them to get? Overload is funny. It's kind of death. Can we take headstrong? Yeah, we'll take headstrong here. They do more damage, take more damage, that sort of thing. That's actually do more damage, take less damage, I realize. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have gone for that one. You know, think about it a little bit more. No, we can just use sinking. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> we'll be fine. We can take sun shower here, too. That's good. That's 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 going to work wonders, yeah. Do doubt my choice is a wee little bit, but that's okay. Hong Lu skill? Do we give him another skill 3 by any chance? Is that the play? Do we do another skill 2 to skill 3? I think we might. I think we I think we do. Yeah, yeah. We can get Carmilla here, potentially get an upgrade on at some point. Um, Any good gloomy things? Not particularly. I don't think we're going to be likely to get any good gloomy things. Bloody Gadget will... I mean, it just goes for you, Song, meh. Nothing too special. Painkiller for safety, and then we reroll once more, see if we get anything random. Uh, I mean, those are tempting. Could just get rid of like this, because I hate it. Then we can just grab the nebulizer. And we can grab lithograph. Okay, seems good. Start with an event here. Stack defense level down stuff, that's always nice. Hong Lu's got this. It's Pierce and Gluttony, which we don't have the most of, but we do have a decent bit of each of those. Okay, Slash. Yeah, you guys have Gluttony skills, and we do have Pierce in the form of, uh, your attacks. Yeah, throw you back on the team, since we're not fighting an Abner this time. Okay. We're actually doing decent here. I guess we kind of need to not be overconfident here. That's the thing. We'll get that sloth resonance going so that we get the sun shower benefit, so we've got better chance of winning our clashes. 
But um, these guys do do 50% more damage on top, like the 15% more damage they got earlier on, so they do a lot of damage. Although our clashing is not the worst thing, and we do immediately have three insight on uh, on Hong Lu once again. Issue's gonna be when he gets two skill threes to start out with, but then we can just evade with him. Then we can just evade with him, and he'll be set next turn. Yeah. It's that simple. Isn't that insane? Speaking of that simple, we can just do this. That is a perfectly valid move we can do this turn. Because here's the thing, it'll discard the other skill three, and then you'll have that next turn. This idea is insane. I don't know if I'm overreacting or anything, but like... God, it's, it just... I'm definitely going insane. This is honestly a very likely new favorite idea in the game. I'll have to, like, wait and see on it for sure, but, like, it's so much fun because it just keeps on working. Like, it's probably up there with, like, DH Chief Rodion and, like, Pirate Gregor and stuff at this point. Like, just being the super fun ideas. Yeah, let's just, let's just, let's just finish him off there at this point. Oh, I guess we should have used... We should have paid attention. I forgot there's a second wave, and we may... No, we didn't even mess up our insight there. Yeah, because we just used skill threes because we got a battle. Okay, that works. Okay, it would take a lot of effort to actually mess up our insight significantly, but that's fine. Where do we get the Wrath Resonance going? How's that looking? Still a neutral there. You should be able to take a neutral, right? You do? You are weak to Wrath, but you... Do you actually resist Slash? You do actually resist Slash. Okay. Alright, okay, then. We... Yeah, you, get some, you can get some discard going. Alright, that's good. You really have not done much this entire run because I've been uh, picking favorites. That's how it is. I may or may not be picking favorites. That's how it is. Ooh, that's unfortunate. That was the clash we were likely to win to, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Hmm. I think it was a dominating, right? And we just kind of got unlucky, I suppose. Well, that should be fine. It should not cost us the game. We will spam egos if we need to to protect Hong Lu's life, because if Hong Lu dies, uh, the fun of this run also dies with it, and we'd have to focus on, like, the Yi Song or something, which is an idea that sends shivers to my very core. Um, hmm. Yeah, he's doing his best. Hey, look at that sinking. James sinking doesn't do much for us here, but that's fine. Just look at it. And we're dominating all clashes, and we're clashing everything. Okay, so Hong we should be fine. These guys don't have any, like, secret AoEs or anything, that's for sure. Nothing that really should come as too much of a shock, but we're not going to do a lot of damage to them, that's for sure. They're tanking our attacks fairly well. I'm genuinely having such a hard time seeing the damage numbers, because I keep on seeing the large sinking numbers and being like, oh, that's good damage, and then I realize the damage numbers are, like, the small, like, single-digit numbers to the side. <laughs> well, at least we do more damage to people with sinking things to having the bone fragments, whatever they're called. But yeah, this fight might take a while. Headstrong was a very bad choice. And I do realize that very much so now. You're starting to stagger some people, though. And no, Hong Lu. Hong Lu will sweep these guys, if nothing else. Because part of the issue is they are weak to Slash, and you are our Slash guy. Can we do that? Make sure you get the Gloom Resonance going. Excellent. No one's actually doing, like, much of an attack this turn. Hopefully Hong Lu doesn't fail another random Clash that he's dominating on. Which he shouldn't. Let him we'll win those clashes, do those damages. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> this attack takes so much sinking, and it does so little. Okay, at least they died to the moth. That's fine. That's also probably like the easiest fight on this entire floor, is just the bug guys. So hopefully we continue at such paces. Okay. Child in the Flask is 
something. You got this, I think. You did get this, actually. Okay, good job, Yusang. Uh, Pierce Fire. I should have taken the top bats just so I'd have more choices, but, uh, oh well. We got this. I believe in us. Nothing else we do with, like, a, like a substitute, like, unit being, uh... Okay. We just need to be very careful about these clashes, and we should be fine. Okay, those guys aren't going for anything too strong. That's fine. Okay, yeah, this, seem, this seems decent. We do need to be careful about the mass stacks from these guys. Otherwise, they're really not that big of a threat. They will tank our damage because, you know, 50% less damage dealt. Although they don't have sanity, so they do take sinking damage as actual damage. And they are weak to gloom. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Had to think it through for a second. Sometimes I get gloom and pride kind of mentally mixed up in my head. Not because they're both blue, but because... The 3.5 enemies are all weak, or no, the 4.5 enemies are all weak to Gloom, while the 5 enemies are all weak to, like, Pride. You know, since that's it's just kind of the Sin Affinities that just kind of goes alongside them, if you, if you get what I mean. Sure, we do that. Keep our Insight game strong and our Damage Up game even stronger. Oh, they really should... No, I'm doing it right, yeah. I want to use the skill 1 first, then the skill 3, yeah. Just to make sure we get the damage buff for both of them. Because if we do a skill 3 into skill 1, we don't gain the damage buff until we actually discard it, which requires us to use the skill 1. That's what the Sloth Resin's going, why not? Uh, what, what do you do again? I don't I, I just keep on forgetting your gimmicks. Um, yeah, you, you, you block, sure. That's what you do best, after all. Uh, what are we doing against any mass attacks? Do they mass attack first turn? I know some crabs do, but it doesn't seem like any of these ones are. Yeah, okay, that's good. Seems good. Sunshower is giving us solid plus two with final power on every single attack we have. Good stuff. I already killed that guy, nice. Cyclical knowledge will be some pretty good damage. They do resist it, unfortunately. Or they don't resist it, I don't think. Maybe they might resist Sloth, I actually can't say for sure. But they're not weak to it, so it's not doing it as much as it could do. And also, because of, you know, speed shenanigans, he sure did end up using the skill 3 before the skill 1 anyways, but that's fine. And that can be counterbalanced. By having a really good skill 1 going off here. They do resist the slash attack, though. Yeah, that's okay. When they get staggered, they are very dead, and uh, thanks to Downpour, they are very slowly but surely being staggered. Um, you need to ego, yeah. Just, just you, you just want to ego both of these, I think. Don't really think we want to risk that. Get this going. Yeah, we'll do that. It, it doesn't make the damage thing the best, but that's fine. We do this, okay. Seems good. Okay. Oh, Pierce attacks too, so it'll it'll do decent damage. Yeah, 41 there. And then we've got Wishing Cairn. Which will also hit multiple enemies, which is nice. Well it actually didn't check. It is not, yeah. It's only a two target mass attack. And that's thanks to Threads in four, and because we were just targeting that guy twice effectively. That's fine. Okay, second one multiple the damage percentage based on the enemy's sinking with like what max 30% increase if target has what is it? Was it 30 sinking for thir for a 30% damage increase? Was it one for one? Actually I don't remember. I should probably check. To see how much thing we need before that skill three gets its full damage benefits. It's a nice thing. Okay, we take the event here. Rupture, sure. We take it. We take the event. Oh, no more fights. Excellent. Oh, this is scary. Um. We don't really need this. Yeah, no. Let me take the healing and get out of here. Yeah, a little bit of cost, too. That's nice. That's nice. Speaking of cost, we've got, like, no cost. How do we have, like, no cost? Surely we should Did we only do, like, two fights? I guess it's because we only did, like, two fights to that floor. 
Yeah, I guess that makes enough sense. You want another skill three Ishmael? Sure, that's something. Coins there. Ooh, that's tempting. That's real tempting. We don't need grand welcome at this point. We take coin because if nothing else, I want to see if it will if it'll work for Honglu's skill one. Above all else, I'm gonna need to remember that. You know, kind of build around it a little bit. But it would be very cool if that is, in fact, how it works. Because it seems like it's how it works because it triggers the actual tattoo, right? Slash and Wrath. I'm trying to think. I know it's... Is this Fey Lantern? It might be. I can't say for sure. Um, if it is Fey Lantern, hopefully sending only in five people is fine. Oh, no, it's Wishing... Er, not Wishing Carrot. Ambling Pearl. Okay. That's fine. I gotta remember what your gimmick was. Actually, no, I don't. We've got sinking. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a double skill three potential issue, but that's fine because you can just have you dodge something. Yeah, just to do like a random dodge like that. That'll work. That will go twice. That's good. I'm gonna clash as much as possible with everyone else. Stack the sinking on the shell. Yeah, might as well since that's what we're attacking. <laughs> You actually aren't going to win any clashes, are you? No, okay. Well, you can- you're fine getting hit a bunch, so, you know, just redirect this, re-redirect this, and that should be fine. We also do trigger your passive here, which means you'll gain the damage up for your evade. That's cool. Good stuff. Oh, well, yeah. The- the boss- we're just gonna sing this boss to death anyways. We hope to see some really good damage off on Yi Song, but, like, sinking, so... It's chance of survival are not great. It does have, like, a good sin resistance. Or is it only good physical resistance? I think it's got good sin resistances. Although they did nerf its resistances after the initial uh, final part of Canto 5, I think. Changed it from, like, 0.4 to 0.8 or something, right? I don't remember the specifics there. But it's something along those lines. Yeah, this will be a lot of sinking. Nice. Good stuff. This will be a lot of sinking. Nice. Good stuff. We did just stagger the shell already. That's nice. Yeah, you've got all these green slimes. We really don't need to pay any attention to them. We need to we pay them no mind. Oh, and we didn't actually get to evade with you, so you, uh... That's fine. You'll still get to discard stuff here, yeah. Yeah, shell resistances don't change, right? That's the gimmick. Okay, yeah, I'll check the shell. <laughs> Why can I not check the shell? It's... Okay, that's fine. Um, we'll just throw on a blind obsession there, make sure we take them all out. This will discard both, so we're gonna need to use this here. Or we can do this, actually. Yeah, it'll work. We're not doing that, neither. We're gonna be trying to do sinking stuff, I think. We do this, we pop on one of these on the shell? Do we go on on the shell? I wish I could check Shell's resistance, because I'm fairly certain it doesn't change when staggered, and that's the entire gimmick of the fight, but it's not letting me check, so I can't, like, say for sure, sure. We also can't trade the passive here, so that's unfortunate. No damage up for us, unless I were to, like, say, dodge or something, but that would ruin the plan, so nah. So I've changed my mind. Um, Blind Obsession, it, it is actually going to be the plan. We're just going to attack the Shell a bunch, and that should, should probably be fine. You might corrode. That's fine, if so. Yeah, I want to see if this Expend Knowledge is going to go twice, because it counts as a single coin attack, as far as I'm concerned. It does. That is really cool. Hm. We sure did just kill that little slime thing for, like, no particular reason beyond just spite. And we're doing a lot of damage. Nice. Most of that was from the singing. We only did, like, actually 60 damage. So I do think the Sin, if anything, is extra keys. Although you are resisting sinking, though. So we did do a little bit more than 60. That was assuming the singing was doing normal damage. But it is being resisted. As can be seen by, you know, the sinking not doing maximum damage. Yeah. I mean... There's the... the, the it, it died. That's all there is to say. Die. Perish. Good damage. 160 HP left on that. You might actually get the kill thanks to sinking. Yep. You know, Yi Song carried in the end. Who would have thought?
But yeah, that... That is a super fun unit. I was expecting, like, I was I was excited for these banner. Like, they, they seem pretty cool. But I was not expecting to like you just as much as I did. Jeez. The, the dopamine, like receptors are like going like off the charts i, th I think i think that's a, a normal way to phrase such a such a statement yeah giving my 750 lunacy giving my 20 battle bus levels and as i like to do we're just gonna watch them all fill out and just get all the satisfaction the thing about how many boxes i'm gonna get and how many boxes i've spent today alone and how my box amount is at like 100 now but this will bring it back to like a nice like 200 ish right yeah pass level 890 that's good good stuff been a couple weeks since I actually did beat a Mirrodin 3 as well, because, uh, or a Mirrodin 3 hard as well. Thanks to my tomfoolery kind of running amok sometimes. Kind of perishing in normalish encounters. Back to 21 modules. Yeah, my modules should need to go down. 300 boxes are back, though. That's good. We don't have a lot of shards left, so that's not, like, the best thing, but that's okay. Don't think there's anything else to look at. But yeah, um, pretty safely, like, S-tier unit in terms of the fun factor, assuming you, especially if you like DHA Rodeon like I did, you're going to absolutely adore this unit, I think. You know what? Good, good, goodbye, K-Corp. We don't, we, we don't, we don't need you anymore. We've, we've got DHA now. We've, we've got the real peak. Yeah, look, look at that. Good stuff. But yeah. That will be all for this time. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next episode. Bye!